Hi there, this is Murf again. Um, so, in the previous video uh, about PCB as 10, I uh, showed you how to install it. Uh, so, my installation is complete actually. So, I, I'm excited to have another video uh, just to go through the post installation and then logging into the system. Um, so, uh, here, uh, one thing I want to share is that you can save your installation config to USB, which is really a great feature, uh, I think. Uh, that PCBSD has, so that's really good. So I'm not gonna save anything, but I'm just gonna click on finish. Okay, and I'm gonna eject uh, the the disk. Oh, that was too quick. So. I wish it could have done like uh, you know you know in in, in uh, actually I'm just gonna power it off. It was too quick for me actually. Sorry. I wish uh, like uh, Ubuntu installation. Um, it could have just say you know press enter to eject the DM medium, and then it would do it. Um, give you a chance, so it's kind of uh, something that could be improved. Okay, so hold shift to the left menu. Not sure what it's for, but maybe one day I might need to use it. So, as you see, it's using a FreeBSD kernel under the hood, and which is good. I love FreeBSD. And, uh, yeah, it's not actually quite faster, I would say, still looking good. And a VM. So it gives you a a generic host name. It didn't ask for host name, so it probably they wanted to make the installation faster. So that could be the reason for that. As you see here, it gave you like some sort of a PCBSD name. And Starting all the services. So there you go. It's FreeBSD logged in right now, and it's gonna pop in the uh, I think uh, the login screen pretty soon. Okay. Okay, your display has been configured to this setting. So it configured my display to 1600 by 1200 automatically. Looks like so. Yes. Thank you. Okay, and uh, I'm going to choose English. Uh, welcome to new PCB system. You may choose your language. Of course, English for now. And it detected my my time zone, which is really good. I'm going to give it a name. PCBSD. Oof, PCBSD. Ah. I'm going to give it a root password. Definitely not password. And I need to create a user. So let me create my user account. Mm, actually, oh, sorry, that was my name. Okay, root uh, password. And the password, repeat. I can encrypt the user file, so that's pretty good. Uh, so that's good extra security. Uh, so I'm gonna choose that. Always go for encryption if you can for your desktop or personal computer. Uh, that way, you know, someone steals your data, they can't read it. Your laptop or desktop, right? Okay, setup is complete. Press finish. Okay, so by default I got the uh, KDE screen, that's fine, so I'm going to log in. And it list makes me log in uh, to only this, uh, my account that I created, not the root account, so, which is good. Just KDE, go. Wow, it looks uh, shiny, as KDE is.
so far I'm impressed actually with the performance because I had long time ago I installed uh, I can't remember it's PCBSD 8 or 7 and it was uh, the installation was actually very slow and I had to try a few times actually but uh, I'm really impressed with the improvements uh, made by the PCBSD team KD is always takes a little longer than usual uh, desktop so that's that's nothing new actually <laughs> okay we finally made it okay so welcome thank you click on next uh, getting connected it gives you some information if your computer is connected to the network cable auto configured with the SCP yeah that's good probably for uh, grandmas install applications in uh, you know, a PC based in good app, app cafe which lets you search for installation is there application uh, app store or whatever you want to call it software center uh, in a bunch of term they call it app cafe that's a nice name and need to add a new user, configure the firewall, add printer, PCBSD control panel is uh, one step. Okay, that's good. That's the control panel. So that's pretty simple. And preserve your files. This can crash. Files can last forever. Live preserve application, which makes it easy to synchronize your user data in your FreeNAS system. Oh, it has some integration with FreeNAS, which is really good. Um, so. Uh, I had a video about uh, older version of FreeNAS installation, you can take a look, but uh, I think there is a new version out already uh, which you can install on your home network or VM, whatever you want to use. I do a lot of VMs, so uh, it's not a bad idea actually. And up to date, they have a you know update system from App Cafe. And finally, the community involvement. If you think you can help them, definitely go for it. Right, so finish. And I don't want to see it next time, so click on finish. So there's the nice desktop here. Just gonna right click, see what do I have. It's a regular uh, KDE style, definitely. Uh, refresh desktop F5 activities in KDE. You can do things in activity wise. Uh, lock screen, leave folder settings, you know, icons, all sorts of things, right? It's usual stuff. So I'm just gonna go here. That's what it looks like a start menu is, or whatever you call it in the Windows world. Um, you can favorites. That's normal. And let's see what it comes up with by default. It comes up with uh, oh X11 VNC server. That's pretty good. Um, desktop sharing, all the KDE apps. There is a you know, file viewer, web browser. I'm not gonna use that browser. Okay, and I'm gonna go applications here. Multimedia, you have all the regular stuff. Disk burning too as well, K3B, okay. And internet is is uh, it's kind of uh, so. So it doesn't have the Firefox by default. Let me see what Concur. Yeah, I don't like it. Uh, oh, okay. So that's remote desktop client, that's pretty good. You will definitely need that if you do a lot of remoting. Office, okay, you have doesn't come with the um, LibreOffice or OpenOffice pre installed, that's kind of interesting. Utilities is so where you have your calculator, clock, note taking. Um, yeah. Uh, I want to put it that in my desktop favorites. Right, so I have it here. Where the heck did it go? I see. Oh, let's see here. Just gonna use this here. Link here. Okay, that's good. I guess you can have you have access to terminal. You know, it's uh, if you do unm a, you know, it's gonna give you the information of the kernel. The system update available already looks like. Right, so I got in an access. It's good. And uh, let's see how many updates available. Looks like a lot. So far, the desktop is uh, responsive in a VM. Let's see if I can maximize this. 
Oh, nice. It um, automatically maximizes. If I go to full screen, I think it'll be a little bit of full screen as well. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'm full screen now. Right, it's almost like uh, I'm running in this system. So not bad. Um, it's actually good. I wouldn't say not bad. No, good. Look here. So that I can access my files. The update process is taking quite a long time though. Right, it's kind of... Uh, Task manage settings, I can do a lot of things. Right. Uh, a little slow, I might sh I sh should. Uh, let me see how it's doing. I have pretty high load average, looks like. Update 1 is taking quite a lot of CPU. So that's quite, quite heavy. I wish it didn't use that much. It should be uh, a lightweight, but it's not, looks like. And. I was keeping it busy, so I have only one CPU on the machine, um, and uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, the update is taking quite, quite a hit. Just gonna go to App Cafe. So I, I'm guessing I'll be able to install Firefox things like that. Here, it looks like it's Firefox over there, so I can use Chrome, which is really good. Kind of different interface. Install now. Okay, so it's uh, starting to download. Uh, the download speed's not that great. Oh, here you go. It's getting better. What else do we have here? Gonna install Chromium definitely. So yeah, it's uh, it's gonna download this one first, and then it's gonna do that one. I wish it could have started downloading that one as well. Just install it that on, but at least download. Uh, but uh, let's see what they have in web. Not quite a good collection, looks like. Most of the apps that you need. Okay, go to home. Let me maximize this. So there are different category. Exterminer is the external stuff. X11. Okay. Oh, these are the recent additions that they added here. The section here. Um, I do think the uh, UI probably needs a little improvement. Uh, LibreOffice, right? If I need LibreOffice, which I will need at some point, I can install it. I will need VLC for sure. Um, that's uh, that's the recommendation section. So I can browse categories, and then I can go uh, database. You know. Quite a lot of uh, almost uh, most of the important ones they have. There's a mind mapping tool here. What can I search here? Let me search MySQL. Hmm. Let's search MySQL. That's kind of weird. How would uh, Maria DB? How about DB? Then it comes with that. How about SQL? SQL. Nope. I think, uh, yeah, that's kind of. Uh, but I guess, you know, FreeBSD has a huge port tree, so, you know, you can do all sorts of things. Uh, system utilities, native ports management. Uh, you can install ports to whatever you want. That's quite a good collection, I think. That's enough. Uh, so, installing it right now. 
Firefox and then once it's installed I'm gonna see how it looks let me see my uh, system it uses BSD tar which is a pretty heavy CPU intensive application looks like it's a lot of average yeah. it's probably better to put uh, more CPUs here probably more memory as well maybe if you are using for your desktop right so okay so other than that I'm in pretty stock KVM uh, environment right here you have uh, this is the uh, live preserver system that they have open it up and enter your password okay for the VM I mean I think it's uh, performing good so this is the live preserver system I don't have any not using the system yet so I can manage the pool so this is the uh, my ZFS pool I can manage this through this preserver system I can click on it file and then manage pool and I can create uh, this there is a wizard that will walk me through this process of new snapshot it will allow me to create a snapshot of kind of backup snapshot of, uh, of the uh, ZFS pool. So ZFS has a functionality which allows you to create a snapshot and you can roll back so that's really powerful actually and I'm a big fan of ZFS uh, to be honest uh, based on what I worked with it many times so classic backups you can compress regular way uh, a directory home directory looks like and you can extract the home directory as well uh, restoration I think I don't have anything yet so nothing is there that's pretty impressive actually um, what is this thing this is uh, you can load an ISO file rescan devices you can rescan view disk usage that's kind of a pretty hidden area looks like but uh, it tells me my disk usage it uses only 9 gigabyte and 46 gb free so I could have done like less space but I tried uh, a time before with the less uh, drives because it say it recommends 50 gig so that's why I chose 50 gig but yeah it tells me which one is taking what and that's the update manager So close it. So it installed Firefox. Can I open it up? So yeah, so if I right click on it, I can add a desktop icon, which is already done. That's pretty good. Menu icons I can add or remove, and path links. I can uninstall by right clicking it. Now installing Chrome. So I'm gonna open up Firefox. Well, uh, the system is paid actually with CPU, uh, CPU looks like. Yeah. It's installing um, Chrome. Okay, so just gonna make it a little smaller again in this way. It's taking quite a long time to install to open up Firefox. It's gonna install it. Okay, I'm gonna close it. Actually, did I click it? Uh, oh, I changed my Firefox icon color. I didn't. I click and open. See if that opens. Hmm. 
Yeah, it's taking a long time. Might have to add more resources in the system, maybe. We add more CPU. I don't know what PBI is. So PBI is the installation system they have. Okay, uh, so I'm going to power off this system and see if it does better. Okay. Then I'm going to assign more CPU and memory. Cancel. Under graceful shutdown. So yeah, CP uh, resource-wise, I'm finding it a little bit uh, challenge. Then if I had Ubuntu, I would or, or CentOS or Fedora, I think it would be like this. Uh, uh, so it's gonna modify it. Oh, uh, ZFS uh, is uh, oh, it's not powered up. Just too quick settings. I'm gonna go to system. I'm gonna give it uh, two processor. I'm gonna give it more memory. Six. Four gig RAM and two vCPU. Hope it boots faster this time. This time it's the host name is showing up right, so that's good. Okay, this time I think it's better. So far so good. Let's see how fast this one goes. A little faster. Okay, come on. Boy, it's slow. Usually, VMs are not that slow on my machine. Okay, let's give it a shot this time. Him maintains finished, whatever it is. This is where you can see the notifications. 
I'm still very slow, I think. Uh, on the VM, maybe it's not uh, uh, optimized for this virtual box, but I would guess they did it already. They probably have tested a lot. Uh, okay. Yeah, still a challenge, uh, looks like. Tons of resource. Okay, my Firefox didn't open. Well, that's not good. How about Chrome? Yes, I know. Yeah, something weird is happening. Okay, Chrome opened up. I don't like with Firefox. Anyway. I think it might be the VM that may be causing the problem, but uh, maybe in you know, a physical machine it might be better. But I cannot make the judgment yet. So maybe there's something. Let's see if I can go YouTube. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can play this. What am I going to play? Minecraft so it does look like it does look like uh, it plays uh, YouTube plugin by default which is very good actually YouTube uh, you know by default sometimes you know some distribution can't so that's very good uh, Go to CNN.com, yes. Yeah. So, um, that's about it, I think. Uh, so, the next review I'm going to do, I'm going to try to log in with uh, uh, Mate desktop and see how that one reacts. But this one wasn't that impressive on a VM, I would say. From the uh, Maybe if I might need to add more CPU and memory, but I'm going to try that as well. But, uh, you know, control panel I didn't get a chance to go in there yet so um, let me take a look okay yeah control panel has all sorts of things like you know like a regular control panel audio control there's a firewall manager which is very good actually hmm. check it out I thought I'm done, but actually I'm not. Uh, so yeah, it's a firewall manager, it looks like. Uh, you can do exceptions, you can add rules. That's pretty good. Um, the other thing I heard about is Warden, which is like a gel management system, which is like a cool thing, uh, I think. Sorry, clicked it twice. Okay, I'm just going to uh, set up network, but I can create new jails, which is like a virtual environment, but it's not a virtual machine, it's just a jailed uh, file system with all the bits and pieces in it. And, uh, you know, I could install different FreeBSD kernels on, on a jail. I haven't tried on this one, but I know the FreeBSD can do that, but I want to play with it at some point. Uh, you know, uh, I have an old PC, which... Uh, which doesn't have uh, virtualization, IBT, Intel virtualization technology enabled uh, capability, but it has uh, quite a lot of uh, four cores and uh, uh, 
8 gig RAM, so I'm gonna install this if it works well on my VM. I'm gonna install this and have gels there, a different version of BSD, and I can play with that. That looks pretty good, and this graphical interface will make it helpful for sure. Uh, network configuration manager is similar. Super is probably I would say clean up the desktop. No, by the name. That's not bad. You clean up the clipboard stuff. Uh, X1 one VNC. By default, it install Adobe Flash Player. Looks like the sound configuration, display configuration. So I can go here. No. Oh, Firefox just came in. Thank you very much. And uh, that took a long time. Well, that's why I think I like Chrome better than Firefox. <laughs> At least uh, right now. Um, system log, boot manager, active directory. What, what is that? I'm clicking on things that excites me, so hopefully you'll mind. Just gonna check this as well. Hardware compatibility. Okay, no Wi Fi. Yeah, I don't have Wi Fi on this machine. Yeah, that's good. Has 256, definitely good. Easy PBI. It's a package manager with a little bit easier version, I think. Load modules. I haven't got a chance to play with that. Stop it manager. I'll click on this one more time. Let's see if it opens. Okay, that's the Active Directory. You can uh, enable Active Directory domain, and pass name, a lot of trusted domains, administrator name, password. Connect to LDAP. That's really good. Uh, yeah, so you can enable this machine to that. And as the user manager, system manager is. Uh, Something you know, gives information about the system, system memory, the processor. I have i7, so as you see here, page to the system source, port tree. I can, you know, I have an updated port tree again. Uh, miscellaneous. This is these things you can do with FreeBSD command line. You, they kind of add the GUI. That's not bad, actually. This makes it better. X11 VNC server, let's see what it does. Like, I know it's a VNC server, let's see how it looks. Choose the port, enable SSL, listen on local host, and file transfer, you can enable it. Hmm. It also gives me an example, so that's pretty good. Report bug. That's about it. So, uh, that's my take on the PCBSD. The summary should be I found it slow. To load apps, uh, especially Firefox, and uh, you know, uh, seems like heavy use was intensive on these VirtualBox VM. So, uh, you know, I, I think there are some room for improvement there. Uh, other than that, I mean, it's actually a good installation, um, no big issue. Uh, I think uh, I'm guessing it will be good on the physical side, physical machine for sure. But, uh, you know, uh, other than that, I mean, it's, uh, the idea is great. I think it has a good uh, time ahead of it. So, enjoy PCBSD 10. Thanks.